Let's do it. Let's add a custom biome to Minecraft. All right, we found us back in Teletra once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom biome to Minecraft. Now here at the very beginning, I want to sort of caution a little bit because while, of course, we're going to be adding a custom biome and it's going to work, there are a couple of limitations that are going to face us. Number one, we're going to be adding the biome. I'm going to show how all of that works with Terra Blinda and then the customizing, like most of the customizing, the bulk of the customizing you will have to do on your own. But for that, there are a couple of resources that you can take a look at. But first of all, what is Terra Blender? Well, Terra Blender is a library mod that we simply need if we want our custom biomes to be added to the overworld. If you only want your custom biomes in your custom dimension, then you don't need Terra Blender. However, as soon as you want to add it to the overworld, there is basically no way around adding this as well, because if you don't do this, then your mod will be incompatible with every other mod that adds custom biomes to uh, the overworld. This is all since 118, I think, when the like world generation changed to a insane degree. And sadly, we will need to use this library mod. But this actually makes it quite easy. So in the wiki over here, we want to go down and first of all, copy the maven right here. That's actually quite important. So for your fabric setup, it is quite crazy, but you want to go to the build.gradle file under the repositories right here, you want to add Maven Minecraft Forge because otherwise we're not actually able to get the Terra Blender dependency over here. Then we want to take the mod implementation of a Terra Blender Fabric right there with the X's and the Y's. We're going to change those in a second, of course. I'm going to add this right here. And then the question is, what are the X's? What are the Y's? Well, the X's, quite easy. Those are just 122. That's just your current Minecraft version. And then for the Y's, we're going to use 3.0.0.170. So that's going to be the version that we need in this case. With that done, we have everything that we need so we can now load the Gradle changes. This, once again, is going to take anywhere from a couple of seconds to maybe a minute or so to download Terra Blender and to add it to your project over here. Just stay patient, let this run through, and then once it's downloaded, we can continue from there. There you go, build successful in 28 seconds. So let's see what we can do. In our world package, we're going to create a new package called Biome. And inside of there, we'll actually make one more package it's going to be the surface package. And then in there, we'll make the mod material rules over here in this case. And then the rest goes into the biome package. This is going to be the mod biomes class. We also want to make the mod overworld region class, as well as the mod Terra Blender API class. And this is actually the class we're going to start with because it's quite important that we get this correct. So in here, this should implement the Terra Blender API over here. And we can actually immediately override the on Terra Blender initialize method right there. We can delete this and keep it like this. And now what we want to do is we want to take the name right here. And this is extremely important. So please pay close attention and definitely do this. Otherwise, it will not work. So in the fabric mod JSON file, you need to add this under the entry points over here. So once again, we want to go in here and we want to say a new one that's going to be Terra Blender written exactly like this. And then a new list of Terra Blender API and has to be net Kaupenjo tutorial mod. And then this is under world.biome. So it needs to be once again the correct package line over here, right? Net Kaupenjo tutorial mod world biome. And then we get to the mod Terra Blender API. This has to be the case. If you don't do this, then it's not going to properly work. Once we've done this, we're actually going to continue with the mod biomes class first, because that's going to be the first step to actually registering or creating the biome. So for this, we once again need a registry key over here, this time of type biome in this case. And I'm just going to call this the test biome because that's the best name that I came up with in this case. And this is going to be equal to the registry key dot of registry keys dot biome. And then this is a new identifier of tutorial mod dot mod ID. And then just the name, which is going to be test underscore biome in this case. And there you go. That's going to be the registry key created. Then we will have a bootstrap method again. So there's going to be a public static void bootstrap here in this case with a registrable of type biome. And we're going to call this the context again. And this is going to be context.register passing in the test biome key and then passing in the test biome method, which of course right now does not exist yet. Passing in the context here. And there you go. So for most of the rest of this, including this class and some other classes, I will be copying quite a few things over. The outline itself is going to be the same and then only the particulars are going to be changeable. So keep in mind that all of the code is always available to you in the description below in the GitHub repository. So no worries at all. And you can see we're 
copying over the global overworld generation method over here, as well as the test bio method, which is going to be creating the biome itself. So you can see in the test biome method, right, we're creating a spawn builder, right? So porcupines are going to spawn, wolves are going to spawn, as well as farm animals and bats over here. There's a biome builder, which is going to have, you know, the mossy rocks added, default ores, extra gold ores, so trees from the plains and stuff like that are added right here. And you can basically add all sorts of features right here in this case. And then here at the end, you make a biome builder, which you can basically say, hey, does it rain? You know, what's the downfall? What's the temperature? The generation settings and the spawn settings should always basically get the builders that we've created. And then on the effects here, you can do a couple of things, right? Watercolor, sky color, and all sorts of things like that. I found this to not work with the create in-game music over here for the custom one. I'm unsure why that would be the case, but there you go. That is a thing that you can do. You can, of course, also always check the builder class to actually see what else you could basically be calling here. For some examples for biomes, go to the overall biome creator class over here and you will see that first of all, the add basic features over here, that's pretty much the same idea that this one has, you can see, and then you can see that there are different methods for different biomes over here. So create the jungle, you can see this is what it does. Now you might have to scroll right a little bit, but you can basically see this has all of the overworld biomes. Highly recommended to take a look at this class to basically see what you can change. One very important thing inside of the method itself is that the order in which you add the things to the biome builder right here is actually very important. So of course, one one thing that has to be the case is that the feature steps, right, the generation steps over here have to follow this order. But then inside of the order itself, it also is the case that the trees planes apparently have to go in front of the forest flowers and in front of the large ferns. If I were to put them here, for example, it might be the case that this does not work. I don't know why this is the case once again, because biomes are absolutely ridiculous, like I don't know what Mojang did there, but they did some very weird stuff. But that is a thing. If it does not work, then it might be the case that the order of features that you're adding is not correct. So what I then basically recommend you do is you comment out a couple of features and you uncomment them one at a time and you see which might be in conflict. That's basically the only way that I found this to work. But yeah, that's that's sadly it. With this done, we can go to the tutorial mode data gen over here at the very bottom and we can add another registry. And that registry is going to be, of course, the biome right here. And then this is going to be the mod biomes class colon colon bootstrap. And with that, the biome here is all also added there. So that's going to be pretty awesome indeed. Now it would be generating a JSON file. However, it's not yet adding it to the world. And that, of course, happens with Terra Blender and the region right here. So this mod overworld region is going to extend the region class from Terra Blender API. Very important. You choose the correct class over here. Hover over this create constructor matching super. We can delete the region type because in this case, the region type is going to be overworld. That's going to be fine. And then we want to override the add biomes method over here. So the add biomes method, the way that this is going to work is we're going to call the this dot add modified vanilla overworld biome passing in the mapper. Then starting to type modified vanilla overworld builder, accepting with the tab key and then making curly brackets and inside of those curly brackets, we can now replace biomes. So this is the way that this is going to work. We're going to take the builder and we're going to replace a biome. The biome we're going to replace is, for example, biome keys dot forest. And we're going to replace this with a mod biomes dot test biome. So in this case, some forest biomes are going to be replaced with our custom test biome. This is basically the way that you have to do this. There is a secondary way, and that is the one that is preferred. However, I've not got this to work. So you can go to the GitHub repository, to the examples over here, to fabric, and then you will be able to find in the example a region over here. And in the region, you can see that it actually uses a parameter point list builder over here. And with that, it basically uses the parameters to then map them over the other parameters. Like I said, I have not gotten this to work properly, so I have just been using this. So there you go. But you can always double check the GitHub repository from Terra Blender. Highly recommended to use their example as well as other mods that use Terra Blender if they are open source. I believe Biomes Your Goal should be okay. I know that Biomes or Plenty does not work. And I don't even know if either of them are fabric, to be honest with you. But those are the two that I remember specifically. But yeah. Right, and with that region done, we can now go to the mod Terra Blender API. And right here, we want to say regions.register making a new mod overworld region, making a new identifier of a tutorial mod.mod ID. We're going to call this the overworld as this is what it is 
changing after the first closing parenthesis. We then want a wait. This is going to be sort of the wait on how often this might appear. And with that, we would already have our custom biome spawning. However, we don't have any customization. You might be like, well, wait a second. We do have some customization in terms of what, like what's spawning and what features are spawning. But how can I change the landscape? How can I change what is, you know, how the what blocks are spawning? Well, that comes that is where the material rules come in. And those are another addition that is absolutely freaking insane. And how insane is this? Well, first of all, I will be once again copying over the contents of this as, you know, it's not actually that bad, but also it is quite crazy, actually, in terms of what is happening. So the material rules, basically, you given certain conditions, you can then place down certain states, right? So certain material rule states, which are, you know, for example, the ruby block or the raw ruby block. So the things that I'm going to do is that if there is a floor, right, we're going to change the floor to raw ruby and everything that is a ceiling, we're going to change to the ruby block. That's all fine and well. That is basically the depth at which I was able to probably do the modifications for the material rules. That is pretty much it. One thing you can take a look at is the guide to surface rules. Now, while this is for Forge, because it's called surface rules and not material rules, the idea is the same. But the condition over here, whether or not it's called if true or or condition, that, that is basically the same, it's the same idea. That one you can take a look at and you can also take a look at, I believe that Terrorblender also has some of them. Yeah, the test rule data over here, that is where they place te red terracotta and blue terracotta for their different biomes over here. But yeah, that, that, that is sadly the only thing I have been able to easily do. You would think because inside of it, right, in the material rules, there are rules like vertical gradient or there are things like above Y right here. So you might think that, well, couldn't you just do, you know, above Y, you know, 50 and then you go to like 80 or something like that. And in between those, I want to, you know, create a different block that spawns in there. It doesn't work for me. I have no idea. The material rules are absolutely fricked. Like they are insane, in my opinion. They are crazy overcomplicating this thing. And this is as far as I've gotten. I highly recommend, like I said, you take a look at both Terra Blender as well as other GitHub repositories if you find them and see their material rules. And hopefully those can get you to your custom biome. This is the way that I'm going to keep it. If you want to further customize it, you have to do some research on your own. With the rules made, however, we can now go once again into the Mod Terra Blender API class and say surface rule manager dot add surface rule, surface rule manager. We want to use the rule category of overworld. We then want to say tutorial mod dot mod ID and lastly mod material rules dot make rules. And with that, everything is done and we're good to go. So the first important thing, of course, is we wanted to run the data gen because our biome is a custom JSON file. So do keep in mind to run the data gen. And once that is done, we can we should actually be able to see our custom biome here being added. So let's wait a moment and take a look. Oops, there's, of course, something I've forgotten, and that is in the mod world generator class. <laughs> we want to add this right here as well. This is going to be the registry wrapper registry biomes over here in the configure method. Otherwise, it's not going to actually write the JSON file. Once we've added this, though, then all of a sudden our JSON file is going to be generated. There we go. Our biome JSON file added and we can see basically there are different carvers. There are the effects that we're defining over here. And here are all the features in the correct order that they have to be in, uh, including some spawners over here for certain animals and entities. That's pretty awesome indeed. And with everything done over here, the JSON file generated and Terra Blender added, we can now run the client, make a new world, and see our biome for the first time. All right, finally, us back in Minecraft, and let's take a look over here. Let's locate the biome, tutorial mode test biome, and there we go. We can actually find it within range, and once we go there, you can see there it freaking is. So we have some raw ruby here on the, well, basically on the ground, and if I were to, you know, descend down, you'll be able to see that the rest over here, the... The ceilings are all ruby blocks and the ground is all raw ruby, which is actually pretty freaking cool. But yeah, there you go. That is going to be the first steps on custom biomes, hopefully to get you started with some pretty cool world gen. And that's all we need for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll add a custom dimension and portal. Hope to see you there. So yeah.